So in today's tutorial, we are going to make a progressive house main influenced by FSOE and Paul Thomas. I'm telling progressive house, but this was actually kind of melodic techno back maybe 10 years ago. So I will call this kind of beat board progressive house. So it is there in between the melodic techno and progressive house. So let's sit down and make some a progressive house. In this type of tracks you often find a bit like uh, let's say harder low end than in regular progressive house so that's how we start the track so I think this will just do and I'm thinking of uh, making a track in D and I think this one uh, is not in D so let's put this in the D yeah this will be fine and let's EQ it a bit Maybe it's a bit too long. Let's shorten up slightly. Good. And the one thing that I like to do, actually use a bit channel EQ to shape the kick a bit more. This sounds a bit more smoother to my ears, a bit more like a natural. So that's what I'm going to do. And boost a bit highs. Yeah, it just makes this uh, the kick a bit smoother, I will say. There's not a really huge difference, but I like it. And the second thing that I'm going to do, make this super sub sound. And it will be just playing the same single note. So what I'm going to do when the kick hits, I'm going to... I'm not going to use these guys over here, so let's shorten up to make it easier for myself. Control O, and give it a bit slight groove. I'm not going to exaggerate this. To make it even smoother, I'm going to push it up and push it down, push it up and push it down. There is slight movement, but not really much. Let's put this all the way down here. So what I'm going to do, just put a diva, but honestly, you can utilize any scene that you want to. So what I'm thinking, like going for the very dark uh, sound. So I'm going to go for the mini mono here and utilize a single oscillator, put it down and put the get off all the way down. And let's play this. Being down the sustain. Again, I'm just looking for this super dark, super low. So if I play here and take a look here, you will see that actually it's quite low. And I'm gonna get cut even more here. I'm just interested in this, this super low in the sound. So this will be more like a sub in the track. So let's side chain the kick. And I want the side chain for the kick really heavy as well. Pretty deep side chain, and I'm going to go for look ahead so that I can start ducking before the kick hits. Let's volume this, let's volume everything down a bit. Something like this will be fine. And I'm going to add one more channel, and this time I'm gonna put a up layer of the bass. This will be a bit more like a driving sound. So let's take the diva one more time let me just take this guy over here and do like this let me see if it is on the d yes it is on d and i'm going to take the mini mono here and then i'm going to just do something kind of a bit more aggressive a bit more driving but still smooth <laughs> Slight chorus can be interesting here as well. Just makes the sound a bit more like an analog sound. And then I'm going to do put an EQ. And 
Again, this is the top layer of the base, so we don't really want these super lows. We just want this like uh, additional power on top. And I'm going to side chain this one as well, but I'm not gonna do it as heavy as the previous one. <laughs> And finally, probably I will go back to the group and probably take that channel key one more time, delete this, maybe add a bit more low and probably. Let's try this drum bass as well. This will be fine to for to start the sound with. We don't need much more than this. Probably the most important sound over here in this type of track is making this super soul lead sound and making it quite airy. So I will jump straight into that. We will design that and then we will fill out the rest of the elements because again, that is the most important sound for this track. I'm going to use Wavetable for uh, for the super souls because some people were asking me if I can use more Ableton instruments. So let's go for the Wavetable for this one. Uh, so because it's a super sob, I'm gonna just push this into the around um, sob here so that we have that soft out, soft out going on and bring the frequency a bit down so that um, we can have, have it a bit more plackish and then I'm gonna bring the down um, like this so that we can have that plucky sound. So if I play it, it will sound nowhere near to the sound that we are looking for. You can barely hear it, let me open this up. So the thing that we need is adding an envelope onto filter so that it opens up when we play the sound. So envelope two, I'm going to use it for that. Bring this up a little bit, something like that probably, and then go here and pick the envelope two for the frequency modulation. And if I do it one more time. Now it sounds almost like a brass sound. The thing that we can do here, put it into MS2 mode and drive a little bit so that it's sounding a bit more moody now. But again, it doesn't feel like it's sounding super soft. So what we are going to do, put a shimmer here so that we are utilizing more voices. And this means that more oscillators are playing this at the same time. So it will start to feel bigger and weirder. To go along with this one, what I'm going to do now is actually activate the oscillate two and put in the sawtooth. And this time though, when I'm playing both of them, I'm going to tune this down a little bit so that um, it's a bit due to these two will be a bit too detuned from each other. So let's go for something maybe minus 18 here and plus 18 somewhere here. So if I play one more time. And it sounds much better already. So what I'm going to do is play with the envelopes a bit so that we can get a bit like a less plucky sound. And then the one thing that I'm thinking of doing now is actually adding a bit sustain so that we can hear that tail of the sound a bit more. So let's do that. So now at the moment we are hearing much more this like a weird distortion. So this is a good big good start but we have to add a bit of reverbs and the delays to get the sound really that we want to have. So the first thing I'm going to do actually push the highs slightly so that we are exaggerating when we play the highs. And then I'm going to do a slight overdrive as well to push a bit more here around. It just gets the sound a bit more airy and when we open the filter the effect is a bit exaggerated. And right afterwards we are going to add 
echo and give some nice delay on top of that but for this one i'm going to actually utilize uh, the chain um because simply when i play the dry sound i don't want to uh hear the delay too much so that i can have a bit more like pumping effect going on so this will be like 100 percent and this will be like kind of a ping pong so if i play now <laughs> Something like this. Let's try also the note and the eight. I think this is a bit better. Now we are going to add a compressor so that we can duck the delay sound when the origin sound plays. So let me help you by calling this dry and calling this wet so that it's easier to see what's going on. And then I'm going to actually put it in the sidechain and sidechain the sound to itself so this one is the sixth the main lead and if i play now actually if i solo the delay so you will hear it a bit better it will be easier to understand what it's doing so get a bit torsion sound And then we would like to have kind of a big room reverb on top of that. You can either use the insert or the chain uh, or the sand. I'm thinking maybe utilizing something like this, making it big and opening this up so it's a brighter sound and sand it there and see what happens. Immediately big room, immediately progressive house. Uh, the thing that I'm thinking like opening, playing with the uh, envelopes a bit more to smooth the sound a bit more. I just realized actually we have gave be a little bit too much envelope, so I'm going to decrease that. I think this is good enough. We can definitely volume down a little bit. And we have this really uh, let's say skeleton of the track here. So we have the melody, we have kind of driving low and the things that we have to do now adding a pad to support the lead sound and afterwards we will probably add a bit uh, white noises and the hi-hats make it a bit more air. So let's start with the pads, add them and create this kind of a bit more better ambience. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to add this air pad so that we can feel a bit air in the track. So just to avoid listening to the same melody over and over again, I'm going to turn the melody off so that we are not hearing that too much. We can come back and fix the things afterwards. And I'm going to just put this guy over here. So this is basically the D minor. And this is also D minor without the third. So it, it, it will play a bit more notes. It will give us a bit more notes to play around. So what I'm going to do, add a diva and try to pick something that I can actually utilize on the high end. So what that means, I'm gonna go for my probably the easiest way to go to presets and pick a pad sound, some sounds a bit more airy. So here's the pads. Uh, let's this go, this should be a bit uh, simpler. Yes, and let's open this up. Ooh, a bit too loud, let's bring this down. Maybe we can actually do it this way. Great. And then what I'm going to do, basically volume that down a little bit. And cut this. And play around a bit the effects. Really, this is not, this is just enough for giving the air, you will understand a bit when we add everything together because you need these high pads to add the, like a tension and the air at the same time. And let's contrast this with a nice low pad so that uh, we have some kind of melody going on. And this is basically the simple chord progression and 
you will hear a bit more when I play it. And let's do kind of like, uh, I don't know, maybe a serum so that we can get something quite fast. A simple detuned, I will say the low pad. And the thing that here is actually sidechain into the kick so that we, hand, we can feel the overall groove of the track and this is very important. Remember this track will be airy, this track is supposed to bring like the feeling of dancing and Europhia and to get that you have to think about sidechaining almost everything to the kick. I think this is good enough at the moment. Uh, probably we need one more pad sound later on, but we can come back and do it then. And the thing that I'm going to do now, just make uh, simple hats and simple shakers. Probably not shaker, but at least hat and kind of a 16 hat, driving hat, so that we can have this driving feeling as well. So I will start with simple white hat, kind of white hat is sound at least, so that it will be having a bit more energy so that we can actually overdrive it as well. So what I'm going to do, let me see if I have any white hat. Probably we can just utilize this. I really don't care too much how it sounds. So if I zoom in and just crop this, yeah. This will definitely do. Let's add a fade in over here. So it's be like a kind of friction feel in the beginning. And let's open this up. Let's drive it a bit as well so that it gives even more kind of air. Volume that down. And I'm going to send it to the room. I'm just looking for the, the part that I'm hearing the like uh, reverb sound returning back to me. Like the reflection. I think this is a good thing. And the second thing that I'm going to do, put the 16 hats. And I'm thinking of making this one from the kind of clap sound so that it can give me really nice harmonics, I will say. So you will hear a bit more. Let's try to find the simple clap sound. Good that we are already in the claps. Yeah, this feels like it has some stuff in it. So if I play this now. <laughs> so what we are going to do, we are going to just like push those highs a little bit. Just like that. And I'm actually thinking kind of decrease this a little bit and then let's just push this a bit here so that actually it gives a bit more space to open the hat because it's a very rich 16th hat sound. Yeah, this is much better. Again, the reason that I'm picking a club sound to make that type of sound is just it's just more exciting. It gives a bit more driving feel to the sound. And that was the only reason. And again, oftentimes you would also need kind of white noise here to give really the real air. I know I'm talking a lot about the air, but this is important to understand for this type of track to give this Europhia feeling. So what I'm going to do, just pick an analog because this is the simplest way to get white noise. I'm going to put it here and then I maybe just put kind of here. So let's do it all the way here as well. Turn it on. I'm going to turn off the oscillators and activate the noise. So we will be hearing simple noise now. Let me volume down. I want the brighter noise, so I push that up. And I'm going to EQ that so that I don't really want all those low ends here. The one thing that I really don't like is this um, high pass, if you put it in the four times mode, so 24 dB. I feel like it's a bit less natural for the ears and what I intend to do like do it like this super low is cut by this one and the rest is cut with the smoother like a bit less aggressive version of it so you see this nice smooth movement here so 
something like this and then we are going to side chain it again the kick uh, let me just copy this from here and let's play again together we can maybe volume up this off hats a bit and see how much different those hi hats together with white noises and makes here Really, really cool. So the thing that is probably missing over here is now written a bit ambience, maybe some percussions, but you shouldn't overdo it and then just arranging the effects when you are like going up and down. So let me quickly do that and come back. And I'm actually thinking even, okay, let's put the percussions first and then arrange the things around afterwards. So what I did basically put this ambient sound, it's super simple sound. I try to keep the simple things simple. So just void the sound. And really big reverb, you will see that it's like 8 seconds almost. I could have done this on the sand, but I wanted to push this a bit background, so I used the insert reverb here. And then add a call bell and tune it down to minus 5 so that it's in line with the track and sounds like this. Pretty simple. And added a simple clap as well. A slight reverb. And probably the most important thing over here, I thought like when I start arranging stuff, maybe having a riser is a good idea so that I don't need to spend time. I did something that I really enjoy with the risers, like uh, put a just white noise here, serum, and then we are actually playing around here. Um, you don't need to use serum, you can actually change it to um, the white noise that we used before. Doesn't really matter, you can use anything. And drive it a bit. And then this guy over here, the auto filter is actually uh, connected to the LFO. So we have this nice movement. And on top of that, we have this movement going up. So it will move this auto filter as well. So I know it's a bit complicated. So it sounds a bit complicated. It is not. So frequency, this guy modulated by a single sine wave. And then the offset, this guy, we are moving up this one like automation here, as you can see. And it will lead to this sound. It's much more interesting sound than simple, uh, I would say the riser, because it's like a shaking all the time. And then you side chain it to the kick and it will sound even better. It's almost like a super organic um, wind blowing sound. So I think now we are, all, we are having almost like 19, 18 different elements and it's most of the time enough for jumping to do the composition of the track. We have more or less the main elements over there, but we can do now like move around a little bit and make a bit more progression over on top of that. So let me do that quickly and explain afterwards. So what I did, I just add the reversed um, symbols because I felt like the transitions are a bit better. And I think I just add a bit more uh, pad layer, high pad layer, sounds like this. This one is also just from my preset pack, String of Astral Translation. I felt like it gives a bit more uh, drama to the sound. And then, of course, I kind of automated the stuff around a little bit for the lead sound. In the beginning, we are having this uh, movement, closing down and opening up. And then on the break, we are having the envelope actually moved around. So I just copied duplicated them because I didn't want the distort original sound to keep it there. This way you can also have the original sound while you are automating around in case you kind of like uh, play too many pr parameters and you forget how you did the original sound. This way you can actually be a bit more sure that you don't destroy the original sound. And it basically sounds like this. Macro one is basically automating the attack of the both envelopes here. Nothing more than that. And okay, so let me play it and let me show you in the meantime, I can also show you the bit automations and you can hear how it sounds.
And you're probably wondering why I haven't finished the drop and just complete it. My idea was if I don't complete it, you feel like you want to complete it. So you can take the file and finish the drop. And in this way, I may can maybe motivate you or inspire you to play around in Ableton a little bit. The file is of course available on my Patreon. So if you go there, you can download it. Other than that, I think this is the end of the video. And if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye.